all this is dr mohin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so this discussion today once again the chit chat let's make the very few first minutes valuable more valuable for someone who just want to hear something medicine this is the ba2 the symptoms of ba2 so the doctors are saying so far what we are seeing is really similar to the original omicron variant in terms of symptoms and in terms of severity said dr erica johnson an internal medicine physician at johns hopkins bayview medical center in baltimore who chairs the infectious disease board of the american board of internal medicine so like the original omicron strain ba1 the primary symptoms of a mild ba2 infection are a cough fever fatigue and possible loss of taste or smell a runny nose git issues headache and a skin rash are other common signs and symptoms those are pretty similar to what people experience with a cold or other seasonal viruses becoming seas- uh, i think it's becoming human coronavirus dr jennifer lighter a pediatric infectious disease specialist at new york university langone health in new york did note that with the original omicron strain she saw more patients which seemed to be to present with upper respiratory symptoms coughing runny nose and sore throats than with previous strains which were more likely to cause lower respiratory symptoms which we know delta caused more low alpha beta delta lower and this one is more upper and i think it is so much upper that tinnitus and the olfaction problems causing brain issues is also very common so it is just going too much upwards rhetorically speaking so coughing runny nose and sore throats than with previous strains which are more likely to cause lower respiratory symptoms like a deep cough or shortness of breath according to lighter BA2 also seems to target the upper respiratory tract more like the original omicron strain did but again a lot of that is just anecdotal at this point so this is interesting sarswati is here hey sarswati how are you so Jen says it looks like your earlier video you just did was already removed from YouTube was it <laughs> let me go check i don't doubt it that they can do it but let me check so far it is there um so so far it is there i'm actually going to change its thumbnail to a different thumbnail so the <clears throat> sometimes the video when it is finished youtube starts processing it they they do an ai based transcript generator which then looks at every word that is spoken to see if this goes against their policies based on that they also decide if this can be monetized or not monetized or suppressed or stopped or censored or or promoted and so once they have done all of that analysis then they would put it back or kind of it is always there but live chat for example disappears for some hours to be to reappear later so i think that it may be in that kind of a limbo but it is at least uh, the youtube dashboard seems to say that it is still there okay so with this how is everyone <laughs> john says i still see it there margaret says no they are not that quick <laughs> Jen says I didn't see it. I think it would be there soon. It is there. So Casey says I just want to find the link to GABAPentin. So here is I think something that is interesting. Let me 
quickly find a link and maybe I should have a discussion, non-COVID discussion about gabapentin and that influenza vaccine debacle that the um, authors have discussed. But let me show you something in this one. So here, Casey and Cool Beans, if you go to the bottom, so see in the very beginning, beginning paragraph, the authors talk about misrepresented. So here, for example, they say, the release into the public domain of previously confidential pharmaceutical industry documents has given the medical community valuable insight into the degree to which industry-sponsored clinical trials are misrepresented. <coughs> and then they have the proofs, and the proofs are one, two, three, and four. So if you go to one, for example, these one, two, three, and four, they're all fascinating to read. So one is, if you go to PubMed, one is the gabapentin, two is the selective COX-2 inhibitors. This is the one I haven't yet read. It may be actually interesting to go over all of these. Then three is this one, pandemics, which we discussed a little more. Then four is this one that I read the abstract of. So it is actually fascinating to read them all for. <laughs> Vivi says, I just started my do dog on gabapentin, wow. And Kenny says, I'm listening in bed. Gabapentin made me want to put my head in an oven. Maybe we should talk about gabapentin, this, this specific, um, article of this study. Megamuzi says, and statins. I haven't seen any study for statins that is controversial. I can look for it. So Saswati says, I got it, Neurotin. I've missed you all. Welcome back. Uh, Lernan says, have you heard of Peter Goshek? No. Sorry. Saswati says, isn't this YouTube? It is YouTube. Yes. Till they kick us out. It is YouTube. <laughs> Sorry, let me just... Nipa says, I'm now gradually shifting all my supplements to more natural and Ayurvedic based turmeric with black pepper, black seed oil, ashwagandha is a girl, garlic pearl, beetroot powder. I have actually heard of all of them and my mother has given majority of these to me. So Alicia says, I'd like to know more about gabapentin. So maybe we should do that talk. So Casey says, gabapentin amplified my pain, caused severe myoclonus, depression, insomnia. Please talk about it. Okay, so let me take this note. Done. Robin says, how safe is ashwagandha? I do not know. I have not used it nowadays. 
and not read about it but many people in my family do it when we were younger then that was a different thing so ddia says gabapentin helped me recover from shingles four times very interesting Barbara says, I've had lots of patients in the past who were on it, need to know more. Okay, we'll talk more about it. And hi to Lotus. So uh, this is a controversial topic. Controversial in the sense, not controversial here, but within the medical, <laughs> within the medical community. So I can, uh, Nipa, I can find some studies to discuss it, but there is, the community is split. And some say, yes, it is important. Some say it is not. And I can see both sides. Um, if there is a problem with blood thinning that starts and then you give aspirin, then that's a different problem, right? On the other hand, uh, there is a benefit as well of giving aspirin if there is atherosclerosis that is continuing. But I can do some more research about this one. So, are there any good studies? So, the commercial interests, for example, the sites that sell these products, they have tons of studies that simply say, yeah, these are great. Um, I'll see if I can find. This is, <coughs> excuse me. It is actually very interesting that the kind of topics here are can be a series of their own uh, topics. So let me write it down as well, um, Casey. Kevin says that aspirin helped my chest pain and headaches. It takes, I take every couple of days, got it. <laughs> Barbara says, me from Lotus too. M. Gregory says, question, besides dollar, why else would they suppress natural remedies? So if you ask me, let's say for a second, I become that regular traditional doctor. What I would respond to and this is the response you would hear from many doctors and that is in the natural remedies we do not know exact quantity of a substance we also do not know what is the real purified molecule that is helping maybe there is something that is countering that and uh, so we do not really have rcts to prove the benefit etc so that's how they would come in they would say that ideally we should take a natural remedy and then extract the molecule that is really helping then do a study on that then make sure it is safe for us and then give it to us that's how they would say it but <clears throat> in general the whole medicine came together from these natural her herbal medicines somebody said hey this leaf helped me <coughs> And then people did research on that. So we cannot just discount and dismiss natural remedies. Uh, allopathic medicine just says we need to do more research. Yeah. Big Pharma did whatever. Yes, they did. Absolutely. So Nipa says allopathic medicine also derived from natural. Of course, everything is basically derived from natural. Although nowadays, computer models of molecules that can fit with another molecule are being made. So it is possible to have new drugs and there are many new drugs. 
that are not derived from the natural but majority of the medicine is extracted from the natural and how did we find out something natural is going to work that is the um, natural medicine doctors who have been doing it and i have mentioned this once before my family used to have a doctor doctor i'm air quoting not today's doctor we the natural medicine doctor or old time doctors and a teacher that used to be the role of my family's uh, structure or lineage so the when we came to be a little uh, more in age my mother showed me the handwritten books from my grandfather or his father and so on who had drawn little leaves and said this leaf is this plant present in this area and if you eat this this happens so that is how these remedies and these books were written and observations were made which were then used to do the research Hmm. So, are you all ready to have the, uh, what is that, art classes tomorrow? So, John says, Dr. Bean, if you have time, please look at the New England Journal of Medicine study from Brazil that came out today, discrediting ivermectin. Would love your thoughts on it. I trust you. So, okay. I would write it down and look at it. I will make a study from Brazil in. Okay, I will check it out, John. <laughs> That's what he says, like Codeine for your cough. Yes, it is interesting in the beginning, the previous lecture, I was mostly good. And before that, the whole day I was good. And as I warmed up, now I'm coughing a little more. And I was looking here, I don't have my water next to me. So Nicolene Alma says, please talk about andrographis, leaf extract of immune support. Okay, I will have to write it down. We should formulate a process where these uh, suggestions are pulled together, then we vote on them, and then we decide what to discuss. <laughs> Saraswati says, thought it was a yoga and meditation class. So tomorrow is the art. If somebody can help with yoga, then we can have a yoga class as well. The basic idea is how do we keep our brains and bodies active and alert? Uh, VV says all my anti-IVM people are sending it to me. I read it and it was depressing. Worried it's not quite the support I believe it to be. Interesting. Casey says art sounds wonderful. So Saraswati says me yoga therapy. So Saraswati can you teach yoga meaning can you come in and join us live and then teach us yoga if that is it'll be great <laughs> margaret says perhaps it's the topics causing cough possibly let's see if the youtube coughs me out now barbara says that andrographis is a furine inhibitor that's interesting Really, Texas, that is very interesting. The first cardiologist I contacted for stress test had not ever heard of K2, thought it was K1, just ignorance. That's very interesting. Irish doctors are very well respected in our country. Yes.
what else is happening so do we have a yoga teacher <laughs> did, did okay so saraswati says i'll be on it okay so saraswati um how do we get to get your email so one way is if you can send an email to support at drbean.com and say to the support person that hey i've already discussed with dr mubeen can you connect me to him and then we'll do the rest <laughs> barbara said you don't be mortally totally good so we will have yoga teaching as well i i miss in jen remember from ireland who also helped one day with some exercise so saraswati says yoga therapy is an adjunct therapy i'm ready any time so cool um let's get connected with you and uh, we'll figure out one time some day in this chit chat we'll do yoga and maybe we'll make it a weekly class <laughs> sky frog is here hey, sky frog yoga teaching now i'm hungry yes absolutely so algebra bean says can you talk about your upcoming lectures through flccc so yes flccc had actually one day paul marik uh, sent me a text saying need to talk call me so i called him and he said we really like the way you are teaching and the mechanisms um and he has been sending me emails before way before that hey, i really love the way you teach and uh, enjoy it and you're, you're a good teacher and you know, more such kind words so he reached out and he said i think that long covid type problems are going to be more and more rampant and we need to start educating doctors and people and create awareness will you help us and i said look i have i have a lot of freedom in the way i teach and i present i don't have a boss other than you all so or my investors and board members and very kind of them to let me present the way i want to so i said i'm very free my only problem will be if i am restricted from how and what can i present and he said that i would love to hear whatever you have to say you decide what you would like to talk about you decide how you would want to present it and you decide when so um that is the discussion then we spoke pierre cory and i spoke then they have some other team members i spoke with them keith dr keith was very much um, eager as well so we had some discussions and again my basic uh, request was that i want to keep my independence and as you can see for good or for bad i have kept my independence from many many groups i have never become part and influenced by any one organization so this will be the first time so that is the only thing i asked for and they said i said at one point that it is possible that certain times i'll disagree with you or the team members and they said it is fine that is science so if you have a reason to disagree then disagree and similarly i said it's not necessary that i would always <laughs> agree with the team members as well and they said that's totally fine so that is the some of these discussions that happened and so we then started um we discuss it maybe do a live every week from flccc's platform however the process of announcing and providing the links and bringing them to the live is that was not yet set they are mostly zoom based so i said why not i record some of the videos and then slowly we will start doing live as well
So that is a discussion. I have already done a couple of videos. Tomorrow I'm going to do a third video for them. And then we'll go from there. I actually want to, from FLCCC's platform, <coughs> excuse me, I also want to have a, a dedicated section on FLCCC where we only provide information about long COVID, various studies, various pathologies, and then teachings and the protocol. So Dr. Paul Merrick called me a few days ago and he said, I think that long COVID has various phenotypes, which is correct. Remember yesterday I was talking about various kinds of pathologies and there are tons of them. So he said, can we start discussing each one of them and figuring out how do we manage based on that information? So <laughs> I don't know who had asked this question i think john but this is what happened so officially i became partner with them on 14th of this month and now i'm helping with these Patty Zick says, ever done photography? I took photography class years ago. He would give us a subject and we would go on photo, photo safaris. It was fun. Used to love black and white photography. So before painting, I had no clue that what is the purpose of a picture or a painting or a focal point or a one message of a photo or a painting. So I used to be horrible at taking photos. I would just not care for lighting or how a person looks or a thing is. So I have become more sensitive for how a message is carried by a photo or a painting, but I have not done photography. I would love to, I have actually, it is funny. Here is my camera that I bought for photography this is sony alpha 7c and i haven't yet used it it's been sitting at my table i think for two years i bought it before the pandemic before the pandemic or meaning years ago KC says, would that section also have resources for those who have long COVID-like symptoms? Yes. Yes. So that is the point. Education, protocol, and possible management resources. <coughs> My hope is to construct a list of doctors who are managing long COVID in various states, various countries, and then start connecting patients to the doctors. There is no commercial interest in it. It's not that there is a commission from a doctor or any lab values or those. It's just, uh, I think it's important because my fear is that long COVID patients will be, will be swept under the rug as chronic fibromyalgia type patients or as psychologically upset patients. And that would be tragedy and i think we have enough information we are seeing the problem unfold we are also seeing the studies talking about these problems and we are also seeing protocols that are helping i am actually grateful to the lucky stars to you all that the protocol for i recover is actually helping a lot and that was, um, it was a combined effort, but I was leading it. So I am pretty lucky that there is a protocol and I want to continue to mature it. Otherwise, I suspect some people would live 
a life long life of misery and that is what scares me for them this is this was of course uh, not my purpose originally i never thought that there will be covid and then there would be long covid and then there will be a need my purpose was to create medical education and offer clear easy to understand medical education to nurses to nps to pas to dnps to to doctors to medical students so that they can they can practice better that was my mission that was my life and here came covid and now we have long covid so my purpose has become a little more focused so <clears throat> mega says yeah don't let that go hidden no absolutely and compared to chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia there we can see the pathologies unfold in front of us fortunately there is so there are so many studies that it would be important to grab this opportunity look at those studies compile them in one place create management formulations and then start helping Casey says Dr. Bean, that is how MCAS patients are treated, swept under the rug, told it, it is in their head. I wish you would also address medical biases. So this is exactly why. And I actually have a hidden feeling, heart of my heart, I think. Once we help with the long COVID, there will be a lot of similar help for chronic Lyme, MCAS, um, other chronic inflammatory diseases i'm very hopeful about that cyber nurses so happy to be here dr bean thank you for all you do for us you're very welcome you're doing it for each other i am actually a part look my cough this happened after my re-exposure so even i am a beneficiary of these discussions Keeney says, your discussion with Dr. Stephen Phillips and Dana Parrish, yes. So their book and their work is amazing. So Mati Ainarasan says, sorry <laughs> for the pronunciation. I had yet another mold exposure just before catching COVID-19 two years ago. Could this be a cause for my long COVID or any other long haul? So mold exposure can cause chronic illnesses, sometimes as long as you're exposed, sometimes more. But I cannot connect it to long COVID because I haven't seen any such data or studies. It may be, but I can't say yes or no. So I'll tell you something interesting. Uh, <clears throat> this happened six, seven months ago, and it actually made me very sad. And that was, there is a person who sent me a note. And the note was full of curses and abuse and, and bad mouthing. But the note, if you remove them all, and you read the note. The note had said, I spent my whole life in the misery of long, uh, this chronic Lyme type or chronic fibromyalgia. And doctors kept telling me, I have a psychological issue. And so you guys are now finding it out that this is happening and there are studies and you can see it happening. And so, so she was very upset because according to her, her life was ruined when people did not do research on that, that end. So she was very, very upset and she was just cursing. But I could see the agony of the patient who felt that there could have been a solution and we could not reach it. And now they can see it and hopefully she would benefit from that too.
Lisbeth says, my chronic Lyme doctor treats Omicron with two weeks of repurposed drugs and it seems to limit long COVID. The basic idea which I keep um, saying is to control the inflammation first so that the damage that is occurring is under control. Patient becomes functional. Then figure out what is the pathology and then attack that pathology or pathologies. The question is, what are the labs to do to provide that, that visibility? That's what Dr. Paul Merrick was discussing with me to say, we need to come up with the labs and I'm gonna work on that as well. So, uh, Patty, actually, I have been taking sips of water. My water bottle is not here. <laughs> so, I forgot to put it here before the lecture. So, Cyber Nurse says, do you know what other countries are doing for long haulers? Not, not a lot. So, for example, I know about UK not doing much other than Dr. Tina Pierce and so. I'm... Um, I'm sure that there every country doctors are doing something because they're doctors at the end of the day. They know there is a possibility of inflammation and, and to control inflammation. The, but I'm not aware of the complete protocol. I actually saw Dr. Pierre Khori had shared a protocol from a UK-based organization which seemed very interesting as well. So doctors are working on it. I just want us to be super <coughs> laser focused on it till we find a solution and we don't just leave it at as oh well and move on pandemic happened some people got damaged for the life of them now and let's move on i want to look at this and work on this one <laughs> Sky Frog says, I've been seeing a doctor almost every day and I haven't been sick in over three years. Good reason see, <laughs> to see Dr. Bean every day. And if you eat an apple, <laughs> then you can keep the doctor away and still be healthy. <laughs> Dan Robinson says, tell Luffy to go fetch a water bottle. So give me one second. I'm actually going to go get it. One second. Okay, got it. So did you know that this channel yesterday reached 1000 subscriptions? That is so cool. So if I go to <coughs> channels and look at this channel, 1003 or 30 subscriptions, four videos. And <laughs> that is so cool. Randall says, great chair. Thank you very much. Saswati says, thank you for that, Dr. Bean. Have many clients who long COVID and doctors refuse to help. Actually, many doctors do not know what to do. <laughs> yes. So, reached 1,000 yesterday. Lisbeth says, if people with chronic pain cannot use LDN, <coughs> what helps for IL-6? There are many other drugs that can help with IL-6. I would start with more broader spectrum and then narrow them down. Vivi says, Dr. Bean, you work very hard and you're very, you're very dedicated. Are you able to take a daily brisk walk? Yes. So I wake up 
thankfully, Luffy has given me this break from waking me up at two, two or three. So I wake up about 5.30 or 6. So I go out for a walk every day for 20, 30 minutes, so one mile. That is usual. Sometimes I go out in the middle of the day. If the lecture preparation is not too taxing or too demanding because let's say the study is too big and I have to learn through the study and then draw it, then I can actually go out and have one more walk. Sometimes my son says at night, he's a night owl, <laughs> he says, hey, do you want to go out for a walk? And I say, yes. So sometimes the third walk occurs. <laughs> Skyfrog says, I noticed Dr. Bean and Dr. Z both drink out of a sippy cup. Is that a doctor thing? Yes, so this one. Uh, maybe. <laughs> and <laughs> Barbara says, my daughter is a dentist and drinks from one to... <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Donald. So over this weekend, I'll make the merchandise for Cool Beans for this channel. Casey says, I wonder if those who have MCAS could have developed it from prior viral infection and would explain why I long COVID and MCAS. So MCAS can be genetic, MCAS can be because of viral infections or other antigenic uh, exposures. Sometimes there is a baseline MCAS that gets triggered by viruses, especially COVID. <laughs> Saraswati says, Dr. Bean is having a whiskey. No, it's water. <laughs> I don't drink at all. I have never in my life. It is so funny. Uh, a few days ago, I went to a friend. And he has his own winery. We are in California. So many people have wineries. So he has his own winery. So he ran to his kitchen and said, I want you to have this wine. It is from my winery. And I said, I've never actually touched a wine or alcoholic beverage or drinks bottle. So he was he was shocked lots of doctors don't want to catch up with immunology and m and a in us don't require it yeah but immunology is the underpinning of every single pathology i was looking at a, a comment from some doctor to another doctor saying if you want to be an expert in hematology you have to first become Hematology, oncology, you have to first become an expert in immunology. And immunology is very, very uh, interesting. <clears throat> you know that the immunology that we have been discussing over two years, we know more immunology than many of the non-immunology doctors. Immunology is not taught very well. John says, what instruments do you play? So, I love sitar. And I actually had a teacher who used to come and teach me and my wife sitar for three years when we were in Pakistan. When we came here, we brought a sitar with us. And then my children were young, so younger one actually smashed it. <laughs> so, I never bought another, but I love sitar. And I can play sitar for hours. I can just keep strumming it. Lisbeth says, yes, yes, immunology. So I, I was thinking that what we do is this discussion channel, although it is a chit-chat channel, but still I have that, um, that nagging feeling that we should do something that it becomes valuable for our health, for our knowledge, for our information, make us smarter as well. 
So I thought daily, initial 10-15 minutes, <coughs> excuse me, as the time is passing, I'm becoming more and more itchy um, in my throat. So daily, 15-20 minutes, one more part of immunology. And then we do our chit chats. <laughs> With cartoon eyes, absolutely. Texas says immunology rocks. I'm not seeing um, Margaret today. I hope she's here. <laughs> yes, yes. <clears throat> so Nicolene says cool bean merchandise please add in your design the great Dr. Mubin smile okay <laughs> so that let's see if there is someone Dr. Bean in there one second um So if we look at this one, I'm going to share my screen. This one, they're all smiling. So one of them can be me. How, how about this one with this big mouth? So these are cool beans. Something just keeps annoying me. There should be an apostrophe here. Cool beans. Cafe. So S and then apostrophe. I forgot and I'll put that. I kind of like these two cool beans that are just totally all twisted or bent. And this cool bean is just standing behind and kind of laughing, <laughs> saying, I'm in here as well. And this cool bean is just like, okay, yeah, we're laughing. So. <clears throat> Thank you for your integrity. Very welcome. Casey says, need to have a sippy cup in merchandise. Okay, I'll see if I can. Okay. So, this diagram and with this cool beans apostrophe cafe, this thing on a cup, right? I think this should be a if I'm <coughs> so sorry, if I made a um, t-shirt, maybe this can be the front of the t-shirt and Cool Beans Cafe can go on the back. What do you think? <laughs> John, John says, in these days of PC, political correctness, are these genderless Cool Beans? <laughs> hmm. That's an interesting question. Are beans genderful? They seem to be genderless over here or hiding the gender pretty well. <laughs> Robin says I should I think you should be dancing bean. Sure. One of those bent out of shape <laughs> beans. So Joy says, or a sticker we can put in a sippy cup. That's an interesting idea too. <laughs> Adi says, I know people who look like these beans. I am one of them. <laughs> so Dazel says, that art makes me want a Twinkie. <laughs> David says, that's me in the back, just listening. <laughs> so let's see. Let's look at you a little more. This one or this one? <laughs> there is this one too. So which one, David? I should give them each a different mark so we can identify. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sky Frog, <laughs> you're going to get me in trouble. People are going to make really funny caricatures. Dan says bumper sticker. That's a good idea. Guy says these are AI beans. <laughs> yes, this one is too bent. This one, it cracks me up. Although I drew them, but it cracks me up every time I see them. Banana beans, like gumbies. <clears throat> Susan says that is <laughs> sky middle of the table. So this is sky bean, <laughs> sky frog. Nice. Uh, nice try, Sky. You are going to be in here. <laughs> so there's a question, Denido. Thank you very much. Sir, because of vaccine, a lot of people have some sort of immunity against SARS-CoV-2 variant. Is it possible that virus could change its host from human to animal because of evolutionary process? Yes. Actually, <coughs> I was planning to discuss the white-tailed deer. Actually, Texas Mex sent that to me as well. So yes, this happens that um, viruses can, especially the zoonotic viruses that are animal viruses, they can go from an animal to another animal to a human and vice versa. So yes, that can happen. That can happen. Good question. Yeah, Petizik, actually, that is very interesting. A Luffy bean should be here. Luffy, my only worry with Luffy is that he would ask for copyright <laughs> money, but I think Luffy should be there. <laughs> so, so the, one of the writers like, Tada, I'm here to correct. Texas Max say they are all high on caffeine. Of course, they are too high on caffeine because they're cool beans. <clears throat> Would love to see one cool bean dressed up as a rapper with a purple shirt and some jewelry playing a sitar. That would be so funny. So that would be a cool bean. Oh, it's playing sitar. Hmm, I've never made a cool bean or a person playing sitar. So, <laughs> so, I do not know how to make cross legs. So there you go. <laughs> a bit of a sitar. Let's give this guy a couple of hair and an ear and maybe blue color. <laughs> this arm looks like it's broken. And let's make the sitar. <laughs> okay, so this is it. I have to learn how to make a cross-eyed, a cross-legged person. This is it, sitar. We should make some notes as well. etc. <laughs> they should be in this cafe, they should be on the side, a cool bean with this sitar sitting as well. Saswati says, this is one great break from life. 
Thank you. Table or tabla? We can actually make a cool bean with tabla as well. So I have no idea how tabla should be. So tabla, are they made, they're sitting like this. And like this. And then there are hands. <laughs> this doesn't look right. The, the scale is all off. But hey, this is what you get from a... <laughs> you can learn to do this art tomorrow. <laughs> well, at least the tabla guy looks happy. <laughs> His hands are just all misplaced. But hey, this is spontaneous tabla player. <laughs> Caesar says yes in t-shirt. <laughs> Do you think this this is a good picture to go on a t-shirt? <clears throat> I can save it afterwards. <laughs> Evelyn says can't stop laughing. <laughs> Look at the tabla player. He he looks so happy. And the star guy is just so busy with the, oh, I didn't make these stars frets. So there are frets. Okay, even better. And there is a bridge here, a bridge here, some decorations. <laughs> I'm totally wasting your time now. There you go. Even better sitar. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I have to learn to draw Luffy. Saswati so says tabla and harmonium are both. So now... <coughs> I have to draw harmonium as well. Okay, another time. <laughs> Evelyn says sitar beep. Okay, so we are at 8 o'clock. <clears throat> How many strings are there on a sitar that has not been smashed? I think that I remember my teacher teaching it. So the sitar has two set of strings. 12 underneath, I believe. And then seven on top. Let's see. We go to the images. Man. <clears throat> Twelve best Sita strings. So I believe that on a sitar, so there are these top strings. How many? These seem to be four or five. One, two, three, four, five. And then there are 12 underneath. The, the ones that are underneath, they play mostly automatically. Sometimes you can bring a finger and kind of strum them together, but mostly they just vibrate when you are playing the main strings and playing the notes there. So they're kind of accompaniments. Okay, so <clears throat> 
8 o'clock and above. Thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you would like to buy Dr. Bean, there is a link in the description. And I promise you that within the Dr. Bean, I do not <laughs> do this. <laughs> Don't draw tablas and sitar. And there is links as well for buying me a coffee or using PayPal or becoming a patron. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.